Welcome. This is item number nine from the released spring 2014 test questions for the seventh grade Tennessee TCAP test for math. So the stem and leaf plot below shows the total number of points scored by a basketball team for each of 15 games played during one season. Now I'm saying if you, I, I will start out by saying that if you have a really nice calculator, uh, graphing calculator for instance, it will actually do interquartile range for you in most cases. I'm not going to cover that methodology here because I'm assuming that you're probably using a scientific calculator that really doesn't do it as well. So they give us this information and they t a, a nice key which is a bonus that 6 slash 5 means 65. I should say that this is not like 60,399. Uh, 60, These are individual points of data. You just put 6 with 0 and then 6 with 3 to make separate numbers. Um, so then they want to know what the interquartile range for the data is. The first thing I'm going to do before I even talk about interquartile range is to deal with finding out what all the numbers are. I'm going to go ahead ahead of time and count up how many there are going to be. That way I can check it before I move on. Because the worst thing about this type of question is to do all the work correctly and then you just forgot a number and it messes everything up. So what we're going to do is just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'll put a 15 over here. There should be 15 points of data. Just count your leaves by the way, not your stems. Your stems would just be the first part. So now I'm going to make a list. 59, 60, 63, and I'm just going to write some now and not make you listen to me talk about it. Okay, so now I have them there. That's all my numbers. I'll count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. But I don't want to write all that out. Well, you know, suck it up. The question is really easy if you do it by writing it out. If not, it becomes way more complicated and you're just kind of guessing. And this is the type of question that somebody who makes a test that you have to take, even though you don't want to, will put on there uh, just thinking that you'll just not pay any attention to it and kind of blow it off and pick an answer and move on, which is ridiculous. You should get full credit even if you just have to write a few things down. It may take you a total of five minutes to do the whole thing. It's worth the effort, people. Just do it. Now, so what's the interquartile range? Now, when I think of quartile, I think of quarters, of course. Why wouldn't I? Um, so I made the worst looking dollar bill in quarters ever. Just to show you, there's four quarters in a dollar. I know you know that, but I'm just trying to give you a visual to go by. Now, the interquartile would be the inner quarter. So I want to find the values that would sort of indicate the middle 50 cents of a dollar. So the first thing that I have to do is break the whole thing up into quarters. So I'm going to try to find this point right here, which mathematically, by the way, would be the median. The cool thing is I don't specifically have to find uh, the value of the median, I just have to figure out where it is. But I mean, we'll find it. It's just that's one of those things. There's a few ways that you could do it. You could take the number and you're breaking it into two parts. And if you have a um, an odd number here, you just kind of find the number that you round up the number. So I have 15. I want to break it into two parts. I get 7.5, which means there'll be half attributed on the left and half attributed on the right, that kind of thing. So basically round up to find the middle number. It just means that if there's an odd number, you'll have a single number median. You don't have to do any more work. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So right past that is 8. There's my median number. What if you don't want to do that? I don't want to think about this. I'll, I'll mess up my brains doing that. So what you could do instead, and often is just what I do, is I mark things out. Here's the key to doing this. So here's what I would suggest doing. You can do whatever you want, but I always sort of start out if I'm marking them out by marking them differently when I eliminate them. And it's almost better not to slash through them because you can't see them. So what I've been doing over time is I start to circle the numbers on the outside and then I just kind of make uh, either a square or sometimes I just use a dot on the top and the bottom. Why would I bother with that? It's so you know, like if I had a few slashes here and they're all the same direction, 
and then I kind of got lost over here, or lost my train of thought for a minute. It's hard to remember. Did I have enough over here? You have to count them all. If you get out to like right here and you forget what number, you, if you slash one over here after you did it over here, you have to go back and count and it's very frustrating. So just kind of mark them up. That way I know what comes next. I know it's two dots. I am, I'm going to put a circle here. I know there's no circle here, so I know it's circle next. Oh, da, 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 da. There's my median value right there, 77. So either way you want to do it is fine. You just kind of pick and choose. Now, to find the inner quartile range, which would be the two middle quarters, the inside quarters, that's what inner quartile range means, I need to break each section off into parts. So I need to kind of have this side broken into half and this side over here broken over into half as well. So I'm going to do that, um, you know, just kind of starting and setting it up. The nice thing for me is that since I had that odd number, I don't even have to consider 77 anymore. It doesn't really have anything to do with anything as far as interquartile range goes. It is the median value in case you ever need it. But I'm just going to look at this section separate from this section. So it's almost like I'm finding the middle again. Now I can slash them out because I'm not going to need them. So when I do this slash situation, I'll tend to do it this way, this way. So you'll notice, like, if I mess up, I'm like, oh, did I do it over here? Well, there's no right f moving slash, so I know not. There you go. 69 would represent the point where quarter one ends, right here. It's kind of like the median of this section. So I'd put 69 there. That's the value. On this side, I'll do the same thing. I'll do it with a different color. Here, 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 here. There it is. So 90 would be the point. So if I want to know what this range is, because the range is how far, like how much it is, what it covers, what's the spread, that kind of thing. Um, so 90 and 69, I just need to figure out what the difference is. 90 minus 69 equals 21. There you go. So your answer for this one is D. So my suggestion when you have this type of question is just to go ahead and kind of bite the bullet on it. Write down the numbers, so you make sure there you have enough of them. Find the median, and if you want to draw the little quarter and dollar thing to remind yourself, that's a good idea too. Um, but you don't have to, obviously. Um, but sort of find the median, whatever value that splits it into, 50 cents on each side. Then break up each one of those 50 cents, and just show the range of the two middle quarters. So whatever the middle of the second 50 cents would be, and the middle of the first set of 50 cents, subtract those two to find your difference, and that will be your inner interquartile range, which is based on the inside quarters. That's it.